center in the state of Illinois. And it's a pleasure and a privilege to have named that organization facility after Simone A. Robinson. Simone was 21 years old when she went to combat. She did not make it back from Afghanistan. She left a daughter that was two years old and grieving family. And for that reason, we thought it was important to make sure that women are not left out of history. In fact, that's one of the main reasons why we formed this organization. And our organization do some amazing events, and we're always trying to find things that will draw women to help them in all the ways that we can. As you know, there are a lot of issues that goes on in the military, and then we have to sort out how do we get together and fix it for them when they come home. Let's just talk a minute about sexual assault and rape in the military. It's no secret. In fact, it is being acknowledged that it has also grown for the assaults as opposed to going down. And it fluctuates up and down often, but here lately it has gone up. And maybe you've seen the articles about the Coast Guard. The Coast Guard actually was usually not a part of that process of when they were uh, identifying what areas they needed to help out at in the places that were really like causing a lot of harm to women. And so they learned that the Coast Guard was one of them also. And it was a lot of women that actually were being treated a certain way, harassed as well as sexual assault. And just recently, and I can't call her name for now, but you can look it up yourself because it's important that you educate yourself not only by what you hear, but what you read so that you can identify where those actual things happen. So the director of the program, she resigned. She resigned because she did not want to lie about the numbers of women who have been assaulted. And then we looked at, there were also the um, factor that, excuse me, that a factor that the numbers had not gone down, they had gone up in all of the other areas from the military branches of service. And so with that being said, we also looked at, you know, what is the American gonna do about this problem? Because we have to be a part of that system that talks about it, that raises hell about it, and make sure that our women know that they are not alone in the military. We are advocates and we will fight for them as we have fought for them for almost 20 years. And with that being said, what we wanna do often is to have conversations with them at our facility, it's veteran friendly, it is mostly for women, even though sometimes we do assist the males, but our focus is on our women veterans and their families. We cannot leave them out because coming home, that's where they have to go. And then what we found out just recently is that the National Guard actually has a lot of women, younger women who were being recruited. Now, what I discovered was, why are these women homeless? They came back from their basic training. They went to their, their uh, AIT, what we call AIT, the individual learning process of what, the, um, what their position is gonna be for what they actually are going to be learning. And when they came back from that, that was like 60 days, then we learned that they're homeless. So they're looking for homes for not just the other women who were homeless from combat and from the actual wars, but also the National Guard. Now this was alarming because we know that these are young girls, they're 18 years old going into the armed forces, and then we have to protect them in some way. And then what happens is that they don't know how to advocate for themselves because they're new to this. They're coming out of school, they're coming out of the Department of Children and Family Services, and what we have to do is to reach out to them to let them know, again, that they are not alone. 
just recently we had six women that were in the National Guard. They did not know each other from different areas, Indiana, Chicago. And guess what? Homeless. They need help. Some had children. One had three children. We got a call that a woman had seven children. I'm not making this up. And it made me just think, you know, what more can we do to voice our opinions, to find out and make Congress do what they have to do to make this an extreme out thing that they have to look at and they have to take this serious. So what does it look like in the future for them? So we were fortunate to be able to one that was actually uh, had some other issues going on. We were able to help her. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Feather Fist because what they did was they came along and they took care of her. So we couldn't ask for more than to find out that someone is needing help and they were right there. So thank you, Melody and Stacy. So, you know, it becomes a lot of times when we're making these programs up that we do them because we want them to get together. How do we get them together? We offer them certain things. And some of the things that we offer, just recently, we're looking at health initiatives. Now, one thing that we don't do a lot of times is people don't want to go to the doctor. Uh, also, they don't want to take medication. They look for other avenues, what they would like to do for their health, and that's to keep going, thinking that because they are young or because they are thin, that they don't have anything to worry about. But understand that all of those illnesses are because of the things that we eat, the things that we don't do for our bodies, like exercise on a regular basis. Now, had we known that years ago, well, I wouldn't be sitting here right now with these, with these pounds in this seat with me. So, you know, we have to look at now, how do we fix what we broke? And so a lot of what we're doing is we're doing education. Uh, we have a sponsor, basically, that helps us through the process of writing the grants for us. So we do colorectal uh, cancer to educate people. We do that via in person and or when they actually want to do webinars on it. So we're doing that quite a bit. We did one just yesterday, actually. And then tomorrow, we'll be having Thursday, August the 29th at 10 to 12, we'll be having Taco Thursday uh, with the VA Jesse Brown Medical Health Unit that will be coming out. And then we're going to have some others to talk about information on burials because you know what? That's a whole myth a lot of times for people when they wait to the last minute only to find out that what they thought the VA was going to do and keep them in terms of paying the expenses for funerals and things like that. Well, we need to talk about that. And I know America's Heroes Group has been great about bringing the VA on, and they've gone over that several times. But, you know, every time you don't mention it, that's when someone didn't hear it. So we want to make sure that we continue to help, you know, get the word out that listen to those sessions that they offer regarding those things that are important. A lot of people don't have insurance, and we're encouraging women, get insurance for yourself and your family because it's so important. And a lot of people, again, think that the VA is going to bury them and et cetera and so on, and that is far from the truth. So we'll be talking some things like that. And again, Taco Thursday so a lot of people hopefully will come out and support that at 8620 South Pulaski Road, Chicago, Illinois, in the lower level. And we're so proud of our organization and what we offer to the women. And once you see it, you'll be attached to the facility itself. And so then in September, what's important is going to be about suicide prevention training. And we're looking forward to that, and thank you. Sir Thomas Starr that will be presenting that uh, training, and that is on Thursday, September the 5th at 10.30 a.m., and it's a two-hour event until 12.30. And so it's very important, not just we remember that so many have gone away from here because they did not get the help that they need or because they didn't stick with the help that was actually trying to help them. Uh, I've had friends who commit suicide 
And, you know, you never get over that. You always think about that when you start hearing that this month, September, is actually Suicide Prevention Month. And so we want to encourage people to learn the signs, to actually be able to help someone. And then you can see for yourself, you know, when you're not feeling good, you know, if you're a veteran and you're not feeling good, reach out reach out. There are so many hands that are reached out to you. We just encourage you. You can call National Women Veterans United also, you know, but dial that number that they have, three-digit number, you know. Don't just, you know, put it to the side and say, I'm okay. It's okay to be okay, but it's not okay not to help yourself and let others help you. So we'll be having that training, and anyone that's in, uh, welcome to join it, go to event bright and register again that's thursday september the 5th 2024 at 10 30 and it'll be virtual zoom on the event bright so go to there and get that and then we will be having um a session actually uh, i'm proud to have been a part of invitations if you will to speak at the National Association of Black Women, Military Women. Now, they've been around a very long time. They've done some amazing things, too, outside of Illinois because they have chapters, you know, in many other states. And, you know, we want to welcome them really good to Chicago. It's been a long time since they've had their event here in Chicago. So we hope that everything that happens for them will be of the best. And then, of course, they've asked us to do a color guard, too. So let's just welcome them also to the city of Chicago for all those that are not from our great state. And so also on September the 18th, I will be making some comments for them. And also what we do is we have a stand down coming up. So glad to have this stand down. We do it at least once a year, sometimes twice a year. So we have that stand down on Saturday, September the 21st. It will be at the Women Veterans Center, located at 8620 South Pulaski Road, lower level. So we want you to RSVP, go on our website, nwvu.org, and then you can find it there. You can also call us at 872-731-2150. Now, of course, you know, our stand downs are a little different than the ones that they normally have. Because we focus what? What? Yes, that's right. We focus on women, all women. And we want to make sure that, you know what, we don't leave anything out. We have to have conversations, peer support, talking to each other about what it is that we need, what more can we ask the VA to do to make things right, understanding how you file your veteran claims, understanding what that means when you get that claim finished and what your responsibilities are in order to make yourself well and healthy by utilizing the services that they provide for you. You know, a lot of times people will get their claims and they think that's the end of it. No, 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 that's not the end of it. You want to continue with any of the therapy or any of the other things, your doctors for whatever illnesses you have, your medications, and always seek out a second opinion if you can. That's important too, because maybe the medication can change, you know. We need to take better care of ourselves, as I mentioned earlier. It has a lot to do with what we eat and how we manage ourselves in terms of what, what? Yes, exercise, okay? So we want to make sure that we continue to look out for each other. We have some equipment in our facility, so you are welcome to come there and use the facility for your exercise. And so we'll be having that stand down again on Saturday, the 21st of September at 10 o'clock until 3 o'clock. Now, we also, I'm telling you all of these events and stuff like that, and I'll tell you why after I go over them. So we have another event, again, on the colorectal rectal, uh, cancer, another education one. And so we look forward for your participation on September the 27th 
at 6.30 p.m., okay? And so we want to make sure that you stay healthy and stay informed. That's important, okay? So we're going to send that uh, information out again. Um, and then we have on November, we have November the 12th, where we'll be meeting with some uh, organizations that are coming to Chicago, Illinois. They'll be staying at the Sheridan uh, Riverwalk. And so we're going to meet with them. We're going to tell them about our organization. Um, they're going to come by if possible so that they can actually see our facility and know exactly what we do. So, you know, a lot of times you can just say, oh, we have the only Women Veterans Center. But when I say we have the only Women Veterans Center, we really have the Women Veterans Center. You know, you come by and it's turning into a real museum along with all the other things that we have. Uh, you know, the first thing that, and this is funny because the first thing that attracted us to the facility was that it had three washrooms. You know, you have all these women in there and then, you know, we're doing a lot of things. We were doing cooking classes. We do paintings. We do some, um, the, what is it? The crochet, yes, the crocheting and things like that. And so we hope that women will just find a way that they fit in, not for just the membership, but just for a daily practice of getting out of the house, you know, to stop isolating yourself because that happens a lot of times. You know, you just feel good once you start staying home when you retire or if you're just on disability and you're at home most of the time. You need to get out. You need to get that air. You need to, you know, get with your buddies, you know, your battle buddies again. We are all of that. So we want you to come out and be a part of sometimes they play bingo. You know, we have all kinds of activities that we can do to help you to just get through the day, get through the hours, because sometimes it's just not healthy to be alone for a long time. So when we know sometimes you have children, that's a good time when they go to school or bring your children there because we have things for the children also. You know, we have puzzles, we have their own little room, uh, or if you just want to meditate, we got a meditation room as well. And if you want to, you know, get you a snack or something like that or make a snack, you can do that. We don't have a stove, but we have the uh, actual tools that you can basically bake things on. So, and also, you know, a microwave. And so we look forward to just having you to come by and look at what we've done for you. Look at what we have done for you. This is for you. And so Friday, November the 22nd at 2 until 6.30 p.m., we would be doing the Thanksgiving Women Veterans Food Bags, okay? That'll be at our center also. And what we will be doing is giving away food bags to women. And they can either put those things uh, up for the holidays that follow and or they can, you know, use them now. So all of these things are being put together. You have to have event at least six of them pretty much. And we have a grand prize on that day. So we hope to see you soon. And again, I'm Rochelle Crump, National Women Veterans United. Chicago, the Women Veterans Center. We hope to see you soon.